Saints, one of the very last days of 2022, as I was sleeping, I kept hearing throughout the night the acceptable year of the Lord. And it just kept coming. And when I woke up, I was thinking, I've got to read those verses in Luke about the acceptable year of the Lord. And what the Lord showed me was what, not what I expected. Because we read in Luke chapter 4, starting in verse 18, the Lord said this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are downtrodden, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And I thought, there it is. This is going to be a very acceptable year of the Lord. What is going to happen this year, 2023? What are we the saints the remnant who are coming out of Babylon. What are we to see? What are we to hear? And the Lord was reading this from Isaiah chapter 61. And reading in my Jewish Bible, Isaiah chapter 61, I want to read the same thing that he read from this. Isaiah chapter 61 starting in verse 1. The Ruach Adonai Elohim is on me because Adonai has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of Adonai's favor. And I thought, wow, this is great. And this is the Lord. He come. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we've had this year, these years of the Lord, setting those free who are bound, mending, healing the brokenhearted, setting the captives free from their sin. But he stopped right in the middle of a sentence. Right in the middle of a verse. For right after that, because he read, to proclaim the year of Adonai's favor. And right after that, he stopped in the middle of a sentence. Because the rest of that sentence read, and, he didn't read this, and, the day of our God's vengeance. He stopped there because we've had this acceptable year of the Lord. And I thought that's what he was going to show me we're going to have coming here. But I was surprised to learn, surprised to see. In the day of our Lord's vengeance, because he stopped there, because we have had this acceptable time, this acceptable years of the Lord, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But now we come to in the day of our God's vengeance. And what does it say? To comfort all who mourn. He goes, the, the, the next part of that same verse goes into, right after he stopped. What are we coming to in the end times here, saints? And the day of our God's vengeance. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. This is what I didn't expect. This is what I was surprised at. Because he goes to say, to comfort those who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion. And why is that? What is the Lord saying here, saints? If he's saying to comfort those who mourn, who's mourning? Who should be mourning? For we read in Joel concerning the end times. Joel chapter 1. This is what the Lord's saying, saints. This is where we're at. 
Hear this, O elders, and listen, all inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days? Or in your father's days? Tell your sons about it, and let your sons tell their sons. What the gnawing locust has left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust has left, the creeping locust has eaten. And what the creeping locust has left, the stripping locust has eaten. All these things in these end times are coming to this. It's been eaten. It's been destroyed by the locusts. And it says, Awake, drunkards, and weep, and wail, all you wine drinkers, on account of the sweet wine that is cut off from your mouth. And in verse 8, Wail like a virgin girded with sackcloth. So much of this has to do, saints, with the end times, the bride of Christ, the coming of Christ for His bride. Wail like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the bridegroom of her youth. The grain offering and the drink offering are cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest mourn the ministers of the Lord. The field is ruined. The land mourns, for the grain is ruined. The new wine dries up. Fresh oil fails. Be ashamed, O farmers. Wail, O vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field is destroyed. The vine dries up. Listen, saints, we're going to go on in here more about the trees. These trees in the end times have nothing to do with trees. And we're going to get into that later, but keep this in mind. And the fig tree fails. The pomegranate, the palm also, and the apple tree. All the trees of the field dry up. Indeed, rejoicing dries up from the sons of men. Gird yourself with sackcloth. And lament, O priest, wail, O ministers of the altar. Come, spend the night in sackcloth, O ministers of my God, for the grain offering, the drink offering, are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast. Proclaim a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord, Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is near. What's he saying here as you're coming up? The day of the Lord is near. All these things have been cut off. But the church says, No, we're in glory. We're having a great time. We're all full of power and glory. So how does that come to the end times? He's saying to mourn. To cry out to the Lord, alas, for the day, the day of the Lord is near. How is all this possible? Because we see in the end times church, in Laodicea, the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God says this, I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I would that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. We have many messages on this things. God hates mixture. God hates you being in the middle. He wants to separate the night from the darkness. He wants to separate the holy from the profane. He would rather you were on either side, but when you're in the middle, one foot in the flesh in the world, one foot in the church, one foot in the fellowship, He hates that. He said, I'd rather you were hot or cold. This is the thing, saints, what the locusts is of eating. It's leading up to the end times. But the church says what? Oh no, we're not in that shape. We're in the glory. The church is glorious right now. But he says at the end times, church, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. That doesn't sound like getting raptured, saints. This is the end times church. He says, I'll spit you out of my mouth. Yeah, those waiting, watching, ready. They're praying, their lamps are lit. They will go with him to the wedding feast. 
But those that love the world and the things of the world, they're lukewarm. He says He'll spit you out of His mouth. We're to call upon Him. We're to cling to Him. And in Revelation 3.17, Because you say, I am rich, and I have become wealthy. This is what the church is saying in the end times. This is the message to the end times church, the church that goes into the tribulation. Because you say, I am rich, and I have become wealthy, and I have need of nothing. This is why the church sees itself in the end times. Because they say, I am rich, and I have become wealthy, and I have need of nothing. And he says to them, and you do not know that you are wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. What a contrast. This people at the end times, the locusts have eaten everything. It's gone. But they say they're rich. And he says, what does he say? You're wretched and miserable, poor, blind, and naked. What a contrast, saints. We have to have our eyes open. And what does he say? I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire, that you may become rich and white garments that you may clothe yourselves and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And look at saints, I was just telling you, we have to have our eyes open. Don't be like those that think that everything's great. We're to call upon Him. We're to get ready. We're to come out of the world. And what does He say? And I salve to anoint your eyes that you may see. Pray that God would open our eyes, that we'll see the true condition of ourselves, of the church, and we'll repent and prepare the way of the Lord. And he says in verse 19, Those whom I love I repuve and discipline. If he loves you, he will reprove you and discipline you. He says, Be zealous therefore and repent. We're to repent and prepare the way of the Lord. The church is blind. It doesn't see its condition. He says in verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, Christians use this for people to get saved. This is the Lord talking to the end times church. He's outside of the door. He's knocking. And he says, If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to into him and will dine with him and he with me. Verse 21, he who overcomes, who overcomes what? This blindness, and they can see, and they get out of that lukewarm position, and they cry out to the Lord for mercy. They get reproved, disciplined. They become zealous, therefore, and they repent to he who overcomes, who does these things. I will grant him to sit down with me on my throne as also I overcame and sat down with my Father on His throne. Saints, the church, the church is seeing one thing. The Lord is seeing another thing. But this, we're going to be going on again through a series of messages. I didn't expect this with Isaiah chapter 61. And it's going to become glorious right now. That is what we need. That's where we start to repent and prepare the way of the Lord, to have our eyes open that we can see our true condition, the true condition of the church. And we'll end this first message on Isaiah chapter 61 with James, another hard thing. But it's going to be glorious if we repent and prepare His way. He has glory for us. He has position for us. He has authority for us. He has us to rule and reign with Him. But first we have to repent. And what does it say in James chapter 4, starting in verse 7? Submit therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The devil's having his way with the church. But you resist him and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. We can tell you from this experience the Lord called us. He said to repent and prepare His way. My wife and I jumped up and we've been solely and wholly committed to Him. And we've drawn near to God and He has drawn near to us. 
He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable. This is what the Lord's saying. This is in the Bible, saints. You all think you're a bunch of sheep. You all think you're just sitting around being gathered up. You're to walk with God in these last days or you're going to be caught by that thief in the night because you're blind and you're not going to know what happened to you. But you'll go into the tribulation and then He won't reject you. He will pour His Spirit out upon those who go into the tribulation. And they will enter that glory and that power of the church. But in verse 9, what's it say here, saints? This is the Word of God. Be miserable and mourn and weep because this we just read the church of Laodicea the end times church that's their condition they're blind they're naked they can't see they're lukewarm he's going to spit them out of his mouth be miserable and mourn and weep let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom Verse 10, humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord and He will exalt you. This is not hopeless, saints. This is not the end of all things. This is the beginning. And in these messages, as we repent and prepare the way of the Lord, we're going to see what He has. It's glorious. It's powerful. So now let's repent. Hear that voice of the one crying in the wilderness. You be that voice of the one crying in the wilderness and prepare the way of the Lord that you can have an ever-increasing revelation of the Son of the living God and His purpose in and through you.